there on the mountains. There. So we made it to Zaruma. We drove from Vilcabamba today and we thought that it would be a four hour drive. It turns out it's actually more like a six hour drive because half of the drive was on unpaved roads. However, we drove through some spectacular views and I saw a lot of Ecuador, so I'm not going to complain about that. Um, thankfully, we arrived just in time for dinner. So Andreas has a friend who is from Zaruma and recommended 200 miles or 200 milas, and this spot is known to do traditional Zaruma meal food. So as I told you, this is a mining town, and let me tell you, these portions are so big because this food is definitely like for mining. Men. The first dish I got was the carne empanado and I thought it was going to be like a milanesa or a schnitzel because it is pounded thin meat that is then put in breadcrumbs but then they take it one step further and they dip it in uh, egg. So it actually comes out more like a tortilla type thing. They have these fries. I already had one just to try it. Mmm. Oh, it is so good. Potatoes in Ecuador. I get them every time. Then, for some reason, I also needed to have a huge plate of rice because, you know, Ecuador, two starches every meal. And then the second thing we ordered was a beef churrasco, which is like thin meat that has been stewed with tomatoes and peppers, and then it also comes with fries, two fried eggs, avocado, more rice. Traditional condiments on the table, we have some ketchup, some mayo, and of course, you know, we've got some ahi because you're not in Ecuador unless ahi is on the table. Let me first try this empanado. All right, so this is what it looks like. And you can see it just has like a thin crust of bread and egg. Some ahi Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This meat is so tender. Really, really good. Very tender. The egg almost gives it like this unctuous kind of coating. That is really good. Mm, it's really tender. I can't get over this. Mm. Ecuador is not known for its beef, but this is actually fantastic. And moving on to the churrasco. Again, a beast of a plate. I mean, I already know the meat is going to be super tender, just having the last one. And then it also comes in a little bit of sauce. And Andreas is chirping in that I need to get a little bit of everything in here. So I've got avocado. I've got some ahi. I'm going to put it in the egg yolk. A little bit of everything. Mm. I might learn how to make this one at home. <laughs> it's a huge dish. Like the amount of steak on this plate is like for at least two full grown men. But it's really good. I think dishes like this are very common where you have um, a lot of laborers. Like people are going down in the mines. They do well here. And so they can come back and they can order a very big. Both of these dishes were $7. But you do get a lot of food. The beef was fantastic and probably the best beef dishes you're going to have in Ecuador. We just showed up and found this place for $30 a night. They actually charge by person, so $15 per person. Uh, we couldn't see the room in advance. This is central and we know it's very clean. They even uh, did a sanitization like blue light on the money we gave them. We have a view of the busy streets, which is probably going to be loud later. But looks like there's a bakery across the street, which is great. Okay, so last night totally crashed. Didn't see any of Zaruma. 
Um, I think just the long drive and the heat here just knocked me out. So I started to watch a telenovela after uh, we found a hotel room and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna watch 10 minutes of this. And then 10 hours later, I woke up, it was the next morning. So today's plan, we're going to walk around, see some of the places, want to have coffee at this cafe that is supposed to be very well known, going for Tigrillo, and then just outside the city, there's supposed to be this place that's really well known for sweets. But when they're traditional, I feel compelled to go check them out. So that is the plan for today, at least until noon, because then we are headed to the coast. But first, let's check out Zaruma. Seasons change us. Maybe it's just me and mine where thunders had its way. So we are here at Cafeteria Uno to try one of the most traditional dishes in Zaruma. It's called Tigrillo. We actually had another place that we wanted to go first, but then we found out from uh, the reception at the hotel that this spot was actually the place where locals go and the other spot, which is very famous, much more expensive, you don't get as much and uh, it's not quite as authentic. This is literally a hole in the wall it's in a corner it just says cafe so you need to know to go here but they've been here for 40 years they also uh, produce coffee and they have a brand called cafe del cerro and it's you can find it actually in the supermarkets here so they're doing quite well on a very small basis so i want to show you this tigrillo because i have never seen anything so large at all. So first off, we're trying the Tigrillo. It has mashed green plantain, egg, and then also quesillo cheese. So we also have the carne version, which has a little bit of meat, and then also it's in a sauce. Mm. Oh wow. I haven't even tried the Tigrillo at all, but this sauce for this meat is amazing. Oh my god. There's so much cheese in this, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like a breakfast hash that's cheesy. Mm. I don't even want to talk about it because it's so good. By far, the best tigrillo I've ever had. It's like mashed green plantains into like a really good mash, almost like a mashed potato. And then so much cheese and then some eggs in it. This is gonna be devastating because I'm gonna to wanna to eat so much of this. I'm not gonna be hungry for the rest of the day. Oh man. I've had in the last few weeks probably four or five degrios. This is by far the best. The other ones do not compare. The second thing I wanted to share is the Bolon de Mani. Literally means ball. It's usually the size of a big softball. Again, devastating breakfast but it's good to eat if you're going out to work for the day I've tried Bologna de Verde many times which is um, again mashed green plantain that's made into a ball and then there's usually some cheese or some meat or what's inside in the center can vary same thing you eat one and you're done for the day this comes with a little bit of egg if you needed it and some quesillo cheese which should be fresh and salty mm. I've actually never tried this version it uses a peanut paste and mashed green plantain. Oh, it's like a gigantic peanut butter cookie. And of course it's plantain, so it's gluten-free. This is a good gluten-free breakfast if you're going hiking somewhere. Mm. This is good, but that tigrillo is so amazing. I gotta go eat more of that. <laughs> out on 
on such a strong start. And then we had a great breakfast and we were so excited because actually our hotel, Hotel Zoruma Coniel, gave us these little itineraries, which was great. So they first told us about where to eat, have the tigrillo, which was amazing. And then suggested uh, that we go to uh, a dessert or like a sweet spot where they make sweets here just up the road. And they are closed. And so then next on the list was a place where you could have coffee, but also they were closed. <laughs> So we've just been driving around. We drove too far. We did see the Malvis Church. And so the only thing left on this list is lunch. I think Zaruma is going to be a quick stop. But you know, when you're traveling at this time of year, during this time in the world, you're gonna to expect to see a lot of things closed just because it's not worth it when they depend on tourism and there are not a lot of tours here. traditional things that we wanted to see like the sweets and the coffee and some other things are closed but it is Saturday morning in Zaruma so we're gonna walk around we can already see the market is happening something's going on in the square so that just happens when you travel sometimes it's not gonna turn out the way you want so we're just gonna figure it out is a Pueblo Mexico or a magic town very similar to what they're doing in Mexico by identifying towns that have kept their traditional way of life so in Zaruma the people who no longer want to work in the mines the younger generation they do go out they get an education and they are working in other cities but most of the tourism in Zaruma on the weekends is from Zerumenos. So people are coming back on the weekends and they're also so proud of where they are from that even in Quito, Guayaquil, you will find cafes and other restaurants specifically designed for people from here. Uh, it's really lovely how even the place where I had to grill this morning, they told me they were selling their coffee at Walmart, which is the largest supermarket in Ecuador. And yet they keep this tiny little hole in the wall kind of place when clearly they probably don't even need to have the cafe at all. They could open something so much bigger or just sell their coffee. But for them, it's so important to preserve their heritage here. Normally I'm not interested in churches, but since we skipped or weren't able to do some other things, we're gonna do a walk around. This is panela, which is uh, unprocessed sugar cane mixed with mani, peanut butter. These sweets are from Malvas, which is where we tried to go to before. It was closed. And this vendor just said she's been closed too, which is why she's here. It's like a sweet peanut butter treat. Peanut butter used a lot in this area. So this is rompope, which is an Ecuadorian eggnog. So it's got traditional eggnog, just a little bit of aguardiente in it. Oh, I think it has more aguardiente than they tell you. It's very good. Oh, good. Everyone just keeps handing us things. This is pan de yuca. So yuca is that root that you can have very savory. This is super squishy and soft. I think they're actually making them on the spot here. Mm, it's like the softest roll you're ever gonna have. So good. And kind of buttery. 
I'm a fan. We need panda yuca in Canada. All right, it was too loud over at the coffee spot, but we went to Cafe Galvez, which is where we actually tried to go earlier. The reason it was closed was because of this happening in Zaruma, and there's also a big festival going on in Machala, Ecuador, which is a larger town, so the family split into the two different locations. This is a family-owned business, three generations, known to have some of the best coffee in Zaruma, and also when you go there, call ahead, and they can actually roast it to whatever you prefer. So light, medium, dark roast. Super nice people. So glad that we came back into town. Actually on our way back to Cuenca and we're stopping in the coast which means we're gonna have some seafood for lunch.